My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. Despite Utah being known for its great ski resorts, its hiking and biking trails, and its breathtaking scenery, a world of reptiles also inhabit this mountainous climate. As a herpetologist, one of my favorite things to do is to look for a specific species that typically isn't very common, and through patience and persistence, I had found one of my targets, the Greater Short Horn Lizard. This is something I've been wanting to see for years, and I've been coming out here multiple times looking for this lizard with no luck. And finally, do I actually come across a greater short horn lizard. They have amazing camouflage, more so than many of the other lizards out here. I mean, they look exactly like a rock. Now, this is actually the most widespread uh, horn lizard species out of any horn lizard in the world. And you can see they have all these spikes, and that's just a defense because if a snake tries to swallow this, those spikes will cause it to get stuck in the snake's throat. I was able to catch this guy. Thankfully, they're not too quick, and they have a teeny tiny little tail, and they're like little pancakes, if you will. It is only about 65 degrees outside, so colder temperatures, I guess, are what this guy likes. It's sunny rather than hot. This is, this is incredible. This is ridiculous. Usually when looking for a more rare species, you'll end up with something more common. Here in northern Utah, the western yellow-bellied racer is a perfect example of that. Their top speed can be clocked in at around 8 miles per hour, and I like to say I'm quite good at catching snakes, but this species often escapes my attempts at capture. But when I do catch one, it's usually a bitey experience. Oh, oh, oh. No! Oh, oh, oh. So this is actually really cool. Hey, check this out. Oh my goodness. This right here is the Western Yellow Bellied Racer. It is a subspecies of the Racer. Um, which can be found throughout basically all of the U.S. I mean, almost anywhere in the U.S. you live, there is a pretty good chance you will come across this snake. It got its name because, of course, it's yellow belly, and it gets the name Racer because these snakes are notorious for being incredibly fast. And they actually get fairly long as well. In fact, this species can grow up to about six feet long, believe it or not. Um, but they're on average, they're seen between two and three feet. This one I'd say is about a two, two and a half foot individual. Uh, these snakes, uh, as newborns, look nothing like they do as adults. So I definitely consider this a sub-adult because of its size and the way it looks. But when these guys are babies, they actually have a pattern and everything, and they're quite gorgeous. The first time I caught a juvenile racer, I thought it was a gopher snake because it had such a pattern. Once they get older, they start to lose that pattern, and it kind of fades into this uh, super uniform coloration. These snakes are mostly reptile eaters. Um, their main food source is lizards, and lizards are incredibly fast, much faster than most of the snakes out here, except for this guy. This is one of the only things out here that is actually fast enough at chasing down and eating one of the sagebrush lizards' whip tails. But on occasion, if the racer's big enough, they may or may not also try to eat another snake. And these guys will eat their prey alive, whole. Uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. These guys are non-venomous, so um, they're completely harmless. So if you ever get the chance to catch one, uh, if you don't mind getting bit a bunch, then you got nothing to worry about. And the only thing they would want to do is get away from you. If you ever see a racer out in the wild, it's not going to chase you. It's not going to come after you. It's going to do the exact opposite. Getting bit by this guy may cause some bleeding because they definitely do have some teeth. Um, just wash your hands out and you'll be just fine. This species has been rather special to me because it almost always has been there when I fail to see just about any target reptile I try to find. And catching one never gets old. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like, and if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe. Once it's in its mouth, it just goes, and where they'll raise their head above the group. <laughs>